Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a limit problem and evaluate the derivative of a function f at x equals 1. So we're going to talk about the definition of derivatives and see how they apply to limits. So this is the type of problem that we haven't done before, so it's going to be new. Hopefully you like it. Please let me know. Now, we are given that limit as h approaches 0 of f of 1 plus h divided by h is equal to 5. And then we're going to evaluate f prime at 1 using this piece of information. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the derivative of a function in general. And then we're going to find the derivative at a single point. Right, so if y equals f of x is a function of x, then we can write the derivative of f with respect to x as a limit, which can be written as follows. Limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. This basically gives you the slope of the secant line at a point uh, that are h units apart on the x-axis. And then as h approaches 0, the secant line kind of slowly turns into a tangent line. It's an approximation, obviously. And then when you evaluate the limit, you find the derivative, which is also the slope of the tangent line at that point. Okay? So that's the relationship. That's the calculus uh, way to do things. Now, we're going to talk about a particular limit because our goal is to find the derivative at x equals 1. So what we can do is, since this is also a function, assuming that f is differentiable at every x that is talked about here, we can replace, and obviously it has to be differentiable at 1 because needless to say, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't ask for f prime at 1. So we're going to replace x with 1 on both sides. That's going to give us f prime at 1 equals limit as h approaches 0 of f of, be careful, you're replacing x with 1, not h with 1. So it's going to give you 1 plus h minus f of 1 divided by h. Awesome. Now, can we evaluate this limit directly? If you plug in h equals 0, you get f of 1 minus f of 1, which is 0, divided by 0, which is kind of weird, right? We kind of have to fix that problem. So here's one thing we can do, though. Do we know f prime at 1? No, we're trying to find it. But do we know anything about limits? Yes, we do know this limit, so let's see how we can use it. Wow, it looks like it's part of our expression. So let's go ahead and split up f prime at 1 into two pieces. If you have the limit of a difference, it can be written as the difference of two limits. That's one of the limit properties. So this is equivalent to limit as h approaches 0 of f of 1 plus h divided by h minus limit as h approaches 0 again of f of 1 over h. Great. So how does it help to separate these two expressions? We are given the first part. Limit as h approaches 0 of f of 1 plus h over h. So this is 5. We do know that this is equal to 5. And we're trying to find this expression right here. We don't know what it is. But in order for the limit to exist, if you look at this limit here, take a look at this limit. If h is replaced with 0, we get f of 1 over 0. So that limit doesn't exist unless f of 1 is 0. So we can get something like 0 over 0, and then it'll be resolved and turn into a limit. So in order for this limit to exist, f of 1 needs to be zero. Okay, so how does that help though, right? Well, once we know f of 1 is zero, we can evaluate f prime at 1 because it's just going to equal from here 5 minus f of 1 limit as h approaches 0 of 0 over h. And obviously, since h approaches 0 but h does not equal 0, we're going to get 0 divided by a very, very small number, something that's super, super close to 0. And this is going to be zero. So f prime at one is going to equal five. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.